Hi everyone, I'm Shubhi Khanna and today we are here with Prakash Shujwal, a pre-final year student from NSUT. Prakash has officially completed GSOC 2020 and has successfully been working on a lot of projects that are very, very useful and uh, which are slightly complex, but we'll know more about it from Prakash. So hi Prakash, thank you so much for taking out the time and talking to us today. Yeah, hi Shubhi, first of all, thanks for inviting me here. And uh, yeah, I think it would be very fun to share my experience to USIT. Yes, absolutely. And we are also really looking forward to it. So, yeah. Prakash, starting from the very beginning, tell me, how did you prepare for GSOC? Yeah. Uh, see, uh, I've applied for the GSOC in my first year. But uh, at that time, I was rejected. Uh, but I was proud of that because I got to know many things, you know, right? like for how the process is, uh, why I got rejected. So after uh, getting rejected, I analyzed my, you know, uh, situation. I I got confidence that I would also, uh, I would I can get selected in next year if I apply. So after that, I start improving my skill set. I start working on some pet projects. Like, you know, I started learning skills like blockchain technology, ML. Yeah, so after, I think it's around October, when I started uh, filtering out the organizations, you know, I started checking out the previous page of organizations. Uh, at that time, after some searching, after two or three days, I uh, came to know about Sugar Lab. Uh, it is a very, you know, uh, popular organization. Uh, so I chose uh, Sugar Lab. And then uh, the phase where we start uh, setting up the development environment, you know, and uh, communicating with mentors to start it. So if I first joined the mailing list. They have mailing list, uh, they have IRC channels. Uh, so I started communicating with them. I set up my development environment. Uh, I started a little early because I want to, I don't have that much confidence in my skills, you know. So I started a little early. So I, after setting my development environment, I started working on some beginner friendly issues. They have some beginner friendly issues, uh, like fixing some buttons, like fixing some colors. So I started working on them. Uh, after some days, I think uh, it's around 15 or 20 days, I started uh, you know, learning, of, learning about their code base. They have a very huge code base. Uh, they uh, work on both Python and JavaScript. I have more experience in JavaScript, so I chose uh, Sugarizer. They have, Sugarizer is a uh, JavaScript implementation of uh, SugarLab. Uh, I mean, uh, their activities, their uh, platform. So I started working on SugarLab, uh, Sugarizer. Then I started shifting towards more complex issues, like uh, writing the entire activity. Like uh, uh, I started also learning flat packs. They were using flat packs. Uh, so yeah, it would it was a very fun uh, month of my you know, 2019. Then uh, then after uh, I think it's around February that I started working on a proposal. Uh, I communic I communicated with my mentors. They told me like uh, they cleared my doubts regarding the project ideas, uh, all the things regarding it, uh, and uh, yeah. So after uh, you know. Uh, uh, making preparing a basic proposal, I uh, send the proposal to my mentors for review. So they reviewed my uh, proposal, they uh, gave some feedback. Uh, so I uh, modified my proposal according to it, and then I submitted my proposal. So yeah, after I think one month, uh, I got an email from uh, Google like you got selected. So yeah, it was a you know, summary of uh, my journey. However, it is a four to five month journey. Uh, it was, our process is easy, but the, uh, but we have to show some consistency. We have to show some, uh, we have to show some uh, hard work, you know. So it's yeah. all about that. But I also think that it's really inspiring that you didn't get in in the first go and you still tried really yeah. hard and then you did get in. I think uh, that's something that you shouldn't really give up, whether it's GSOG, Outreachy, any other program. Yeah. Uh, it's okay if you fail once, you can try again. So uh, another thing is that, you know, by the second time, that's when you identified Sugar Labs. That's when you knew that 
okay, um, they, there's a component of there that works on JavaScript. I know JavaScript. I'm good at it. So that was how you chose your organization. But for a lot of beginners out there, maybe first year students who have not yet decided the tech stack, who are still learning the basics of programming, how should they choose an organization? Like, uh, officially for this book, there's no any uh, requirement for skill set. Uh, uh, you should have just basic skill set. Uh, the, the skill set could be on uh, machine learning or web development or blockchain or cloud uh, development. I had my own, you know, web development. I have experience of web development. So, uh, uh, I mean, for a student uh, applying for next year, GSOC, what they should do, they should check out all the organizations in the previous page of organization uh, that were selected in 2020. They should mm -hmm. check out every, each and every organization. Uh, so, first of all, they should filter out the uh, ones which uh, looks cool according to them, you know. Uh, which is interesting uh, uh, and uh, yeah so after filtering out these organization they should filter out uh, which uh, have technical uh, tech stack which aligns with their skills like uh, they have many projects some projects would be on python python sub projects would be on javascript some would be on machine learning but then should uh, they should filter out i mean yeah this is a long process i mean it would take two or three days but uh, they should do it this is the way so uh, after uh, after filtering out, uh, you you should have uh, at least two or three organizations. Then uh, at your you know uh, you you will left with. Then after you should check out all the documentation these organizations have. You should start joining their mailing list. You should start communicating with the mentors. Mentors are the only ones which will uh, tell you about how you should proceed with the uh, GSO. So uh, it obviously you should not have, uh, you should, uh, should not be a master in any of the skill. So while contributing, you will uh, develop uh, your skill set. You will get improved in your skill set. Uh, I mean, there the four or five months is very, very long period. Mm. Can, and can, anybody can be a master in any skill in these four or five months. So they should not uh, think about uh, if they get rejected, if they get selected. Uh, so, I mean, the first thing they should uh, do is that choose an organization according to the, uh, according to the, uh, their interest, according to, uh, according to their technical skills and according to their, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, what we call it, um, uh, the organization which looks cool to them. Precisely. And I think there's another thing that's very important to add over here that every company is going to be using a lot of languages, a lot of overheads. So it's okay if you don't know everything. You are not supposed to know everything. Yes, for example, uh, I didn't know about Vue.js. I had experience in React.js. So after contributing to, uh, you know, projects of uh, Sugarizer, I, I still, I mean, I started learning Vue.js. Now I'm, a, I'm not an expert, but I'm, uh, I'm a master in Vue.js, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great that you pointed that out, but that's very important for anyone to remember. Cool. Uh, can you tell us a little more about the project that you worked on? Yeah, so I worked on the project named Sugarizer Game Activity Pack. It consists of two activities, that is educational activities uh, for children aged between 6 to 12. So it was, a, it was a related to the math. So... Uh, one was mind math activities and second was tangram activities. So uh, it was a part of Sugarizer platform. Uh, it, it is very famous in France. Uh, so I've worked on these two. I've developed the developed both the activities from the scratch. Uh, I've used uh, I've used Vue.js mainly for both the activities, and also they have their own libraries like SugarWeb uh, and all others for. You know, features like uh, multiplayer, for features like journal storage, uh, for yeah. localization. Yeah. So I worked on these two, and uh, and we uh, the activities uh, were not that difficult, but the uh, algorithms that uh, were used in these two activities were a little uh, on the difficult side. Side mm. like uh, I've used convex shell, like I've used. Uh, 
algorithm to generate uh, the tangram randomly. So these are the activities. However, I've uh, started working on these uh, these algorithm in my community bonding period. So uh, I could uh, complete the work in time. Perfect. I think that's what a lot of successful G soccer do. They will start working prior to the actual working period. Yeah. So that always saves time. But you know, uh, despite working uh, from before and being really prepared, sometimes GSOC does collide with your college dates because college does reopen sooner than GSOC gets over. So I'm sure that would have been a really hectic period for you. So how did you manage your time with college? For me, I was a little uh, lucky, you can say, because uh, we, d- uh, we didn't have our exams <laughs> due to Corona. Yeah. So I was having a lot of time, but yeah, uh, in next year, students will not have, uh, uh, you know, uh, facilities, uh, I, I can say like this, they will have their exam, they will have, the, they can have their internship also. So I would advise them to uh, make a strict timetable, like a schedule for them. Uh, uh, plan out your task for each week, plan out uh, what you have to do, plan out uh, uh, how much time you can uh, uh, you can left with after completing all your tasks. Uh, yeah, and college studies are important. They should not ignore uh, your college studies. Uh, and uh, yeah, after, I mean, they can manage their time. If they are if they are contributing from four or five months, they know how to manage their studies. That's why they are, yeah, they get selected. So yeah. Uh, Perfect. So create a schedule and stick to it. Is your advice? Yeah. That's great. Um, so I just have a last question for you and that is that what would be three tips that you would give to the next batch of applicants? Uh, three tips. I think I can give more than three tips. <laughs> first, <laughs> so of all, three. first of all, start working on uh, your skill set. Uh, yeah. Improve your skill set. There's still time left. Work on pet projects. You know? So uh, work on your Git knowledge. Git is the most important thing uh, they will use uh, in the entire their GSOC journey. So, uh, I mean, have some basic knowledge of Git. And uh, and yeah, the most important thing I would say is communication with your mentors. Be polite with them, never argue with them. You know, let the community uh, feel your constant presence. I mean, start participating in discussion. If they're having some discussion in their mailing list, start uh, giving your opinions, you know start uh, proposing some features so uh, make them feel make them feel that you are there uh, continuously and uh, uh, start you know uh, start asking questions from a mentor and yeah, yeah the question should be genuine the question should be not like like how do i get started that is the most i would say stupidest question because uh, no mentor should no mentor wants to reply to these questions yeah. yeah, if your question is genuine, like uh, if you are facing some difficulties in uh, uh, setting up your development environment, then you should ask them. So yeah, uh, so communication with your mentors is very important step. And uh, I would say, yeah, third thing I would say, uh, start contribution without thinking so much. Uh, yeah, I, yes, I know there is a fear of rejection, but start this contribution just start the beginning is very important after beginning you will get to know many things the process will become easy if you uh, if you just start the start a contribution period you know uh, many people uh, uh, could not apply for gsob just uh, thinking that gsob is very difficult they cannot crack it they cannot get selected so yeah even if you're not selected in gsob you would have uh, you would have developed your skills that so much then uh, you can uh, try one year after also yeah. so that is the third uh, main thing that i would say and the fourth thing is uh, i think they should ask themselves that, that uh, will gsoc uh, you know become hurdle in their college studies or internship this is i mean they should ask themselves uh, before applying for gsoc because gsoc is a very time consuming uh, you cannot, uh, GSOG is not, lo- not like a part-time job. GSOG is a full-time job. They have to spend at least uh, seven to eight hours in each day. There is no any holiday, like Sunday, Saturday. Uh, so they have to manage their time. Uh, so, yeah. 
Cool. No, that was some really good tips, and uh, you're very right. You should first see even if you can manage GSOC because there's no doing the whole process, getting selected, and then letting down a company. That's very very good. So uh, perfect. That's uh, that's awesome that you shared that with us, and thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, thank you. Golden. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you.